let me repeat this again see majorly there are four major parts of there first one is brain stem next cerebellum and then diencephalon and then cerebrum or cerebral cortex now brain stem it is called as brain stem because it is like a stem like structure on which the entire brain rests the brain stem has got three parts <coughs> medulla oblongata pons and then this big brain now medulla oblongata because of its oblong shape it is called as medulla oblongata it it has got a lot of controlling centers cardiovascular center is there which will controls cardiovascular function increase in heart rate decrease in heart rate blood vessel uh, dilation blood vessel contraction everything is under the control of this tissue similarly respiratory center increase in respiration reducing respiration the control is at, at that junction again 8 9 10 11 12 cranial nerves comes from this region 8 9 we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves are there out of 12 8 9 10 11 12 comes from here the five pairs comes from here <coughs> this is also responsible for reticular formation reticular formation is responsible for our alertness awakeness and arousal all this wakefulness conscious thought is because of reticular formation the reticular formation you have got ascending nerve tracks at the ascending nerve tracks means they will be going to the top regions so this ascending nerve tracks are known as the reticular activating system and this reticular activating system is responsible for our alertness and awakeness when people are intoxicated when they take alcohol this is what is depressed in fact you know there is a class of drugs known as general anesthetics before surgery general anesthetics are taken so that they will cause reversible loss of consciousness that general anesthetics also depress reticular activating system you temporarily lose your consciousness so when you suppress it you will get into sleep or you lose kind of consciousness but when it is damaged it may results in coma too so this is the significance of medulla oblongata <clears throat> after that you have pons is there pons literally means a bridge a, a bridge region which is connecting medulla and this midbrain pons has also got 5 6 7 8 cranial nerves are there but the important one is vestibular cochlear nuclei is there vestibular cochlear is also known as auditory nerve which is responsible for hearing as well as balance also so damage to pons may results in hearing and balance problems above that you have mid brain is there now <coughs> mid brain has got three and four cranial nerves origins so from here the three and four cranial nerves comes out but the other important thing is mid brain from mid brain there are connections to substantia nigra that particular part controls our movements the gait and movements are under the control of this particular one see brain every part is interconnected with another part you cannot isolate it it is interconnected but certain centers are there so this is about brain stem to the posterior to this brain stem you have a cerebellum is there cerebellum means little brain in latin it it looks like another small brain hence it is called as cerebellum and cerebellum has got smooth muscle contraction control is there integration of muscle coordination smoothness of our movements everything is based on this cerebellum anti gravity musculature the way we walk our gait is all depend upon this cerebellum there is something called as ataxia ataxia or cerebellum ataxia means uncoordinated skeletal muscle movement you know elderly people has got this thing they will be shaking all the time their hands that's a kind of ataxia it is because of cerebellum depression or when people are intoxicated with alcohol their gait is changed the, the way they walk is changed you know they cannot walk properly that is again because of depression of the cerebral after this <clears throat> diencephalon dia means passing through or across encephalon means within the head so these regions are passing through or across the brain or head hence they are called as diencephalon you have three major parts of there thalamus hypothalamus epithalamus thalamus means a chamber a place it looks like a chamber hence it is called as thalamus okay, all these words are from greek and latin <clears throat> now thalamus is a kind of relay center you know i told you about cerebrum or cerebral cortex cerebral cortex will process all the information the sensory information will be moving through this thalamus hence it is known as a relay center it is called thalamus is called as a relay center now beneath that you have another part is there it is called as hypothalamus hypo means beneath hypothalamus to so the thalamus it is underneath is there hence it is called as hypothalamus 
hypothalamus is very important part there are a lot of functions are there for hypothalamus it integrates autonomic nervous system functions the autonomic motor part is divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic both of them integration occurs with occurs in hypothalamus again hypothalamus has got feeding center satiety center and thirst center when whenever <clears throat> blood do not have enough glucose brain will give signals so that there is an urge to eat that is what is called as feeding center the feeding center will get activated and you feel like eating something satiety center means when you eat to certain extent body feels that you are full that signal is again from hypothalamus thirst when you when there is an urge to drink water the third center is there with hypothalamus all the three centers are there along with that the, the other things water balance is there with hypothalamus intermediary metabolism how carbohydrates are metabolized fats are metabolized it is under the control of hypothalamus and then temperature and bp control is there. temperature i explained you the sweat when the heat is generated to reduce the body temperature body will lose the kind of sweat similarly vasodilation also enables heat exchange and body temperature comes down bp control is also there the other important thing from hypothalamus you have pituitary gland is there pituitary gland you have anterior part and posterior part is there anterior part is known as adenohypophysis posterior part is known as neurohypophysis adeno means glandular hypophysis means it is under this hypo hypothalamus why it is called as glandular means you have glandular cells from there certain tropic hormones are released Adre adrenocorticotropic hormone gonadocorticotropic hormone growth hormone thyroid cortico hormone all these hormones are released into the blood from this anterior pituitary whereas posterior pituitary is known as neurohypophysis because from the neurons directly hormone comes into the blood circulation oxytocin arginine vasopressin or anti diuretic hormone both of them are from this posterior pituitary directly neuron the hormones are coming hence it is known as neurohypophysis all of them are with the help of this hypothalamus there is a link between hypothalamus and this pituitary gland leaving that you have epithalamus is there epithalamus <clears throat> the major things are pineal gland and limbic system pineal gland releases melatonin melatonin will decides our uh, uh, melatonin release will will cause us to sleep you know when people move from india to us there is a day and night cycle change is there when we have night it is day in us when people go there the body will get confused so they will be sleeping in day time night time they will be in awake form and that thing is called as jet lag to counter that people will be taking melatonin supplements so during night when they take melatonin the melatonin will makes you sleep by suppressing this ras so when people grow in their age the level of melatonin secretion decreases that is the reason why elderly people has got sleep problems that is the reason why they take sedative hypnotics so we all will have it as we grow in our age there are a lot of changes in our body one of the changes this one. the next important one is limbic system limbic system there are so many nucle important nuclei out there but i have explained two important major one hippocampus nuclei and amygdala hippocampal cells are responsible for short term memory it is required for a, it is called as a working memory in order to work you need to remember where is where is your keys uh, where did you keep your book and everything so short term memory is there in hippocampal cells then amygdala is seat for emotions in fact the limbic system is called as emotional brain all our emotions are under the control of that amygdala now understand this one <clears throat> short term memory will be stored in hippocampal cell if i am taking class now you listen to it you will retain the information for hardly 2 to 3 hours after that if you don't repeat or revise you don't remember everything because it is stored in hippocampal cell when no repetition is there it will not go to your long term memory so long term memory means it should go to your cortex cerebral cortex then it will be going to your long term memory how do you get it i explained you by combination of left hemisphere and right hemisphere or by repetition so this is about dyan supplement finally cerebral cortex it takes days and days to explain about cerebral cortex i have briefed it out you have left hemisphere and right hemisphere are there based upon the anatomical location it is classified as frontal cortex parietal occipital and temporal right 
Now, the major utility with cerebral cortex is the left cerebrum controls reading, writing, arithmetic skills. The right one controls creative, artistic ability. The creativeness, imagination, everything is under the control of right one. When you combine both of them, you will get concentration. The ability of our brain is you can combine both of them or they can act independently. When they act independently, you don't get concentration. Even, even you know, that is the reason why people say body present, mind absent. People will be doing something well, but they are lost in their thoughts. Why? The right brain has taken them to somewhere else. They will not be concentrating on this work. That is dangerous when you lose your concentration. So right brain need to be controlled all the time. The other thing, there are a lot of tracks coming out of the cerebral tract. Cerebral cortex. Some of them are in pyramidal shape, hence they are known as pyramidal tracts. The other one are known as extra pyramidal tracts. Pyramidal tracts will control our voluntary functions. Extra pyramidal tracts will control involuntary functions. So this is about anatomy and physiology of brain. Again, I have explained the important anatomy and uh, physiological features. After this, we'll get to the other topics.